Electric Dragon 80,000 volts recently got what I'm pretty sure is its first ever Blu-ray release from Third Window Films, and it's the sort of film that's just right up my alley. First released in 2001, it is written and directed by Mr. Gakurio Ishii, formerly Sogo Ishii, who was the director of kind of ultra-stylish punk experimental films such as Burst City and Crazy Thunder Road in the 1980s. Now, Electric Dragon came later in his career, during a time when he kind of moved on to making these much more elegant, slow-paced character dramas that always had a really kind of interesting atmosphere and a style to them. And in a way, Electric Dragon is a lot more of a throwback to Ishii's more kind of aggressive earlier punk films, of which he's still probably best known for in the West. Now, Electric Dragon is not one of those films that really relies too heavily on having much in the way of a straightforwardly structured plot. It's much more of an experimental piece that sees Gakurio Ishii playing about with style and pace and kind of interesting weird special effects techniques and unconventional high tempo editing in order to tell his story. Crucially, there's very little in the way of actual functional expository dialogue going on, but that is by no means a complaint. Think of it much more as being kind of like an explosive, hyperkinetic black and white Japanese manga that's been brought to life on screen, where the story and characters are very bold and very simple, but you're just being carried along by the sheer style and the momentum of it all. So roughly what this one's actually about is we're following our lead character, Dragon Eye Morrison, who we're first introduced to as a violent child who's been subjected to extensive electroshock therapy as a kid in order to curb his aggressive behaviour. Instead of curing him, the treatments ended up charging his body with an enormous amount of electricity, which of course courses through his veins and which can be released when he touches other people or siphoned off in much more creative ways, most importantly, powering his own badass electric guitar. Now working as a reptile investigator in this kind of strangely futuristic Japanese city, Dragon Eye comes into conflict with a rival, Thunderbolt Buddha, who is another electrically charged individual who is prowling through the city, scanning the radio waves, looking for Dragon Eye Morrison. Eventually, the two of them will face off in an epic showdown, which, of course, only one of them can walk away from alive. So, the most obvious thing that you can say about Electric Dragon 80,000 volts is that it's very Tetsuo. In fact, it kind of tries to do for electricity what Tetsuo did for metal. It's this short, black and white experimental Japanese film, very light on plot, with a strange kind of surrealist atmosphere and very little dialogue, and it's about these two extraordinary individuals, outsiders because of the differences of their bodies, coming together and clashing and ultimately becoming one. The biggest and most telling difference really is that whereas Tetsuo was very very adult and dark and twisted and sexual, Electric Dragon comes with a 12 certificate slapped on it. It's much, much less explicit and out and out fucked up. Now, you can see that as either a good thing or as a sign of compromise. But the fact of the matter is that even allowing for the fact that there is no weird metal rape or splattery gore in Electric Dragon, it is by no means tame or watered down. It's still a film that's got that pure punk ethos to it. You can feel the energy and joy in each and every frame of this film. It deliberately sets out to be totally its own thing. That, in spite of the fact that it's hard not to think of stuff like Tetsuo, that it is still very deliberately creating not just its own world and its own unique visual look, but completely its own vocabulary, its own language and style and approach to the way that the film itself is being made. It's a film that's cut and styled to this ultra-cool tempo, where every character is a leather-clad badass strutting along, where each and everything they do is brought to life in that totally uniquely mad, frenetic, but just gleeful and exuberant way that the best punk music is, with that kind of don't-tell-me-the-rules approach, where there's so much mad stuff going on, where the director is trying so many cool things in each and every shot that it's pretty much impossible not to be won over by just the sheer sense of style and the pure, crackling energy that the film's got as a whole. 
the rivalry between our two lead characters, who are kind of somewhere between being rock stars and superheroes, escalates throughout the film as we see them both closing in on each other before we get to the final, inevitable release of their final showdown together. This wonderful, high-energy, electrical confrontation, where these two outsiders are finally able to just cut loose and to release this pent-up electrical fury that the whole film has been building up to release. The whole end scene is just a showcase for a series of these phenomenally unhinged special effects moments that just get more and more bonkers as that building sense of tension and friction between these two characters just finally erupts into this flashy, crackling finale that's just fantastic. So very simple, and yet done with such a love of just the possibilities of filmmaking, and just this total feeling of let's throw in every mad crazy thing we can possibly think of in, and then figure out how to actually do it later. But what I think's interesting is, whereas stuff like Tetsuo has got that kind of roughness to it, that seems to go hand in hand with that wild, experimental cyberpunk aesthetic, Electric Dragon is much more polished and professional seeming, but it still has got that key spirit of a much cheaper, rougher, more independent film to it. It still has the charm and enthusiasm of a film like Tetsuo that was really just knocked together by people finding out how to do what they wanted to do as they were going along. I should say, of course, that the film looks absolutely beautiful in crisp, clear, black and white high definition on the Blu-ray disc, which really helps you appreciate small little details, and just how much artistry has gone into the design of the film as a whole. You can appreciate the fine detail in props and costumes and the wild and imaginative sets as much as you can appreciate the sound design and the music. Because in a film like this, where music is so important, where the tempo of the score and the soundscape practically lead the action, you need really characterful, punchy music. And the score is full of these eccentric guitar riffs and ambient electronic sounds that just build up this unique world into a place that sounds like nothing you've ever heard before. This strange industrial soundscape into which the violent electronic sounds of our two lead characters come in and just really liven things up. It's a very unique soundtrack, very strange and hard to process just because it is so genuinely odd and alien, but it is totally right for this film. Also exactly right for this film is the length. It runs to just under an hour, I think 55 minutes or thereabouts, and in an interview on this disc, the producer Takanori Sento says what I think so few producers or directors are ever willing to say, that the film was exactly as long as it needed to be for what it was. Long enough for people to experience a different world without boring them is a direct quote. Now, why can't more people admit to shit like that? You know, I love this film, I love the world that it shows, but I can see his point. It's a film that runs at you just full tilt playing loud electric guitar riffs while blasting electricity directly into your eyeballs. You can realistically sustain that level of energy and momentum that it's got for about an hour, because maybe in a longer film it would get wearing. You could probably, if you needed to, stick extra subplots or characters or dialogue scenes in, but then, of course, you risk compromising the film's pace and its carefully crafted kind of musical rhythm and structure. Because it is a very simple film, two guys, hero and rival, squaring off for a fight. But because of that simplicity, you can get away with being experimental and trying interesting things out. It frees up the filmmakers to just perfect the sheer style of the piece, which is really what a film like this is all about. And if making a longer film would have meant diluting the impact of what we've got here, this kind of bonkers, living, breathing, crackling manga story brought to life on screen, then I think 55 minutes works perfectly. Just a very quick word on special features. Um, I think the most interesting special feature on the disc, there's various kind of Q&A sessions from the screenings of the film and interviews with the filmmakers, but the coolest thing definitely to check out that will give you a real appreciation for the film itself and how much genuine kind of artistry was involved is this 20-25 minute series of animated special effects storyboards that have got commentary that show you just the process of animating the film's many special effects sequences. 
It is fairly technical, kind of hearing them break everything down, but it's also genuinely just fascinating to watch, when you realise just how much work goes into just every single tiny little effect sequence in a film like this that's just brimming with them. So I mean, overall, I think that this is just a must-buy. Personally, I'm a gigantic fan of films like this, these kind of mad, hyperkinetic films where you can feel all the love and energy that's been poured into the making of it, where it's all about playing about and doing crazy, wild things on screen, where you're just transported to these strange, exotic worlds that only exist in the minds of true, visionary filmmakers, and you're just allowed to look around and to feel and to hear and to experience things that you couldn't get from anywhere else. I can see that and I admit if you don't have much of a tolerance for kind of odd experimental films, if you like more story and themes and character arcs in your movies, and if you feel the need to explain films and why they work for you rather than just feeling them on a purely gut level, then there's a chance that this might not especially work for you. For me, a film like this, where you're just meshing with the pure creative imagination of a filmmaker, brimming with energy and excitement to show you all the cool stuff that's in their minds, that is just the pure good shit. Electric Dragon 80,000 Volts in my book is coming in at a solid 9 out of 10. There's really very few films that are quite this cool, and I'm so glad to finally be able to check it out now on Blu-ray, because it's a film that benefits from being able to see it in the best quality possible, because it really is practically a living work of art.